I want to thank you for tuning in to the Prodigal Son podcast. You know, this podcast goes all over the world. I I was looking the other day, and and it's amazing what God has done through this podcast to send it to people on all continents. The only person, uh, the only place that I hadn't seen that it's went is Antarctica, and they don't give any stats for that because there's hardly nobody there. But I, I thank God that he has put this in my heart, commissioned me to do this podcast. And, and this is something that, that burns in me every day. I, I go to the jail. I, I talk to those inmates, talk to the officers, get to, get to minister to a lot of people in that jail. And, and I thank God for that because God is working He is working, and he is working through people that are spreading his word, giving people God's word to stand on. Not religion, not how good they can be, but how good he is, how truthful he is, and how much we can stand on what he has told us to stand on, and that is his truths, his written truths. Now, today, I want to... uh, get into something that the Lord gave me probably a week ago and a few days ago. I'm not going to say it's been a whole week, but I've been pondering on it and studying about it. And and uh, it's over in the Old Testament. And it's it's a story of uh, when Jericho was, was taken over and the walls of Jericho fell. And it talks about Rahab. And it, this is in the, six, the second chapter of, of Joshua starting with the eighth verse. He says, Before they were laid down, she, talking about Rahab, came up unto them upon the roof. She's talking to the spies. And it says, And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. It says, for we have heard now the Lord, how learned we have have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you, when then, when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites, and that they were on the other side of Jordan, Sion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. It says, and as soon as we heard. We had heard these things. Our hearts did melt. Neither did there was there any remain any courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on in earth below. Now, I want to talk to you about something that, you know, we, we, we talk about Rahab and we see that that Rahab, she was in the in the the uh, Hall of Fame of Faith. She's in Ab- uh, Hebrews eleven, chapter eleven, the the Hall of Fame of Faith. This woman, this this harlot, that she had faith in God. She told these these spies that went over there. She said, "We believe it. We saw it. We saw what God done for you." But I want, I want you to think about something. I, I'm going to read the, uh, the 11th chapter of Hebrews and the 30th and 34th verse. It says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. It says, By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. You know, she she was it was put in the hall of fame of faith because she wasn't counted among the ones that didn't believe that God's people was going to come and and take over. I'm talking about the 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 walls of Jericho fell. But what I want you to look at that, look at today and 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 this is something that that hit home with me. It's times when the world has more faith than God's people. God's people were the ones that he, he split the Red Sea for. God's people 
were the, on the other side of, of the Red Sea. And they saw God split the Red Sea open. And, and they walked through on dry ground and saw these, all these things happen. They saw all these things just, I'm talking about materialized before, before their eyes. I, I, I've, ta- I've often talked about it and, and I walked through it a lot of times just thinking about what, what God done for that. But when all those people, and some say it's up into the millions of people that, that crossed the Red Sea that day, all those people looked at walls of, of water beside them and walked through and, and saw God drown an army that had, I'm talking about, had hindered them had hurt them and done all the awful awful things that they done to them in Egypt. They saw all that take place. They walked through the Red Sea and went all the way over to Jericho. But you know, it took them 40 years to get there. The majority, all the Bible talks about it, that the majority, all the people above 20 years old had to die off. They had to die because of their unbelief. After they saw all those things that God done for them at the Red Sea. And and I've scratched my head over that for a lot of years. I don't understand it. It it, it doesn't register with me that that all those people could see all that happen and still not believe God. But I understand it more today than I've ever have. Because a lot of times in this world, you see a lot more faith in, in, in just carnal people than you do in, 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 people, in God's children. I guess we've got, got to a place that we get uh, relaxed in the Word. I was at the jail earlier this morning, and... I told him, I said, don't ever get to a place where you don't sow God's word into your heart every day. I said, never get in a place that you forget about what God has done for you. Because the very picture of a, of a group of forgetful people is the picture of what happened to, these, to all these, is, uh, these Jewish people that left Egypt, walked through a wall of water, walked beside walls of water through an ocean, and, and saw God do a miracle. But yet so quickly they forgot what God had done for them. Just, you know, weeks before or days before that. And they got out into the out into the out between there and Jericho, and, and it's not far. But uh, the, they got out there and they began to murmur and complain. And, and it, it's just amazing how we can forget what God has done in our lives behind us in the past. I talked to, the, to a, I preached at a church that I used to go to here a while, you know, a few years ago. But uh, I told them, I said, it's wonderful to be able to look over your shoulder and see what God has done for you, to see how God has worked in your life and look ahead, not knowing what's ahead, but be able to have the confidence that God has instilled in you. Now, I'm not talking about uh, just blind faith, but I'm talking about the faith that, that he has instilled in you when you look back over your shoulder and see what he has done up until that point and then be able to look ahead and say, God, you got this. I know you do. You're faithful. I, the Bible talks about it. He said, I am the Lord and I change not. What he has said he'll do, he will do. And without, it, without a shadow of doubt, Rahab known that. That gave her a place in Hebrews 11, that gave her a place in in the in what they uh, what all those uh, those older 
Jewish people that come out of all those child, older children of Israel, when they come out of Egypt, they forgot. And, and they started to murmur and all that doubt and fear and unbelief. It talks about it. Said said Moses Moses sent the the spies in the the first spies, you know when it first happened, you know forty years earlier from what this story is going on, but he said he, he sent them over there, and two of them, Joshua and Caleb, come back and said we can do it, God's for us, we can do it. But all the other ten spies, the Bible says that they brought an evil report. What was that evil report? What what made it evil? What made it that you know that 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 sad thing that that God looked at? It was unbelieving. It was faithless. Joshua and Caleb said, "We can take the land. God's give it to us. We can take it." And forty years later. When Joshua and Caleb were the only two older people in that group that lived, the rest of them died in the wilderness. The rest of them were were they they were marched around the wilderness for forty years until they all died off, and 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 then the young ones that that God said, "Look, I'm gonna give you that 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 land." 40 years before that, all of them under 20 got to go in. Moses didn't even get to go in. And, and, and the thing of it was, if they would have just believed what they had seen in the past. See, Rahab saw all that. She saw all the things that God done. She saw all the things, that the miraculous things that God done. And yet, she was the one that believed it. it. It got her put in the Hall of Fame of Faith because she believed that the God that was doing those things for, for the children of Israel was the one true God, and she believed that. She helped the spies. She saw all this stuff come to fruition 40 years later. Sometimes when the world has more faith than God's people, I stand back and look and think, my goodness. You, you, look, you can look at that today. I, I, I look at all the, the companies, and, and me and my dad, we, we, my dad called us, said, y'all want to go to dinner yesterday, and we, we hadn't been in a, a, a good while, and, and we said, yeah, and we got to talking about uh, this man that, that's really prominent. In, in social media and in the world. I mean, he everybody knows his name. And, and we were talking about it. And I said, that, that man, I said, as, as far as I can see, he's one of the, if not the smartest man that's ever walked this planet other than, you know, Solomon and Christ. You know, just, just unreal intelligence and figured out things that teams of people that couldn't, that couldn't figure them out. And it's, it's amazing what people can do when they believe that it can be done. Now, that's, that's just a carnal example, but, but the thing, same thing stands true with us. It stands true even more with God's people because we've got somebody that never fails. We've got somebody that never has failed. I heard a preacher talk about it one time. He said it's it's easy to follow something, to believe something that has never failed. And that's talking about this. This right here. This book, God's Word. And when you can come to, to know and realize that God is for you, not against you, when you come to realize what Rahab did, she, she looked at all the things that had gone on 40 years before that. She never forgot what God done for the children of Israel when they crossed through the Red Sea. She said, our hearts melted within us. Said, the, the men here know what's coming. They know it. And, and she knew it. She wanted to get on the right side of this, this conflict. And she did. And she ended up 
in the Hall of Fame of Faith. Why? Because she believed that God was who he said he was, that God was coming to give his people what he had promised them 40 years before. Honey, I want to to explain something to you today. God's made a whole lot of promises to his people, us, the church, the born-again children of God. And a lot of us are not believing what God has said to them, for them, and about them in his word. If there's ever a time in, in world history that we need to come to the place that we can stand on and believe what God is saying, today is the day. There's not a doubt in my mind. There's coming a time in this nation that if we don't believe God, if we don't have faith in God, if we don't stand on what he has said, we'll wish to 10,000 times over that we did. Because faith in God is the only thing that's going to give us that comfort and that strength, that victory and that faith that we need. Faith in God, not faith in the stock market, not faith in, in the companies that we, the prominent companies that we see. You know, I ran a business for a lot of years and I, I at times, had a lot of faith in what I could do in that business. But since God has called me into the ministry, I found out that, that how fragile that industry was, how fragile the, the world is, period. Why? Because without faith in God, nothing works. I'm telling you, we have saw the world shaken in the last 20 years i'm talking about had watched it shaken and 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 completely broken down from what it used to be and it's because that we have sat back and and believe god's word give give lip service to what god's word says but yet really doubted what he would really do When the world says, oh, we know what's going on. I'm not saying the world has faith in God. I'm I'm talking about the world has faith in themselves, in what they see. More faith than a lot of times the church has had in God. And we've stood by and and let this country get in a place that it's it's sad where it has, has come up to. It's sad what, what's going on in this country today. But I want to assure you something. There's hope. There's strength. There's victory in him. Standing and believing what he has said over and above everything that we see. Like I said, there's coming a time that we're all going to have to know and understand that without faith in God, our world ain't going to stand. Without faith in God, we will, we're going to stagger and stumble through life. I've done that for years and years. Tried my best to live a Christian life. Done all that I could do to live that Christian life. But struggled, struggled, diligently trying to, to do what I was supposed to do with doubt in my heart about what God's Word said. Doubt that I'd allowed religion to plant in my heart. I want you to realize something today. There ain't no room for doubt in God's kingdom. There's no room for doubt in a Christian's life. God wants us to understand it. He wants us to have faith in him. And don't stagger at it. Don't stumble at it. But know and understand that what we are seeing in this book, the examples of what all, the, all that God has written down for us to believe. 
and to, and to read, to read out loud where we can hear them. I, re, I read Joshua 2, 8 through 11, and see all the things that God was showing those people of Jericho. They believed it. Yet the very ones that walked through the Red Sea and saw it firsthand, lived it firsthand, forgot what God had done. And it cost a lot of them the, the privilege of going into the promised land. I don't want, I don't want to end up not having faith in God and missing out on what he has promised me. That is my determination. Uh, I, I mean, my deepest, my, in my deepest heartfelt knowing, I want to make sure that I'm believing God, having faith in him every day of my life. Because you can see it saved Rahab and her family's life. It saved their, their, their life. Why? Because Rahab went to work, went to work. Believing God. Not, not working hard, but believe in Him. She looked at the children of Israel and she said, she said, the God that's doing that, I'm going to believe in Him. I'm going to help Him when I get the opportunity. I want you to understand something today. I can't do everything that needs to be done in God's kingdom. There's not a preacher alive that can Anybody that tells you they can, run from them. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be the first to tell you, I'm just a man, I can only do so much. But I want to do my part. I want to sow into you something that, that will get lodged in you and grow into, into a, a strength and a victory that the devil can't knock out of you. And that, that something is faith in him, faith in God, faith in what Jesus Christ died on the cross to do for us. But there's something that you've got to do to get hold of that faith, to stand in that faith, to believe that faith. Faith comes by hearing. Don't come by reading. I've said this over and over. If you can find the scripture that says faith comes by reading the word of God, I'll eat the page. It's not there. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when you start hearing God's word and believing what God says in his word and determining in your heart that you're going to believe it regardless of what you see, Come hell or high water, you're going to believe what God says. You're going to see a faith built in you that's going to so that's going to grow into the to the strong. I'm talking about strong faith that you're going to need to overcome anything that comes against you. I, I think about Psalms one and one says, "Blessed is the man that walks not." in the counsel of the ungodly to those evil reports. Joshua and Caleb didn't walk in that counsel. They said, no, we can do this. Don't, sta don't stand here and tell that. But the Bible says that the other ten spies brought an evil report. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. I want, you, I want to explain something to you today. The Lord called me to start this podcast four years ago in 2018. And at the time of this uh, podcast, this recording, there's over 1,200 podcasts available to anybody that'll listen. They're free. I want to encourage you to listen and hear what will be what will will build faith in you what will teach you who you are in him and the stronger you get in that knowledge and understanding the stronger you're going to be the 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 stronger you're going to be as a christian and stand in who you are
who you have been and who God has promised you to be. There's, there's a faith in that, a strength in that, that I'm telling you that the devil can't scare out of you. But you've got to determine in your heart that you're going to believe what God's Word says. Rahab believed God. She believed that God done what he said he done, and she wanted on the right side of the fence. And she got, she got put in Hebrews 11 because of that. I'm going to tell you something today. Have faith in him. Have faith in God. Believe what he has said. Believe what he has said so that you can stand strong in who you are in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You know, we've, we've given this card out for, for a good while now. And I want, I want you to, to download, or not download it, but uh, go to our website and contact me. I want to send you one of these cards. I want to send you this list of scriptures that we went through one by one for 41 weeks on this podcast so that people could find out who God has made them to be in Christ Jesus, their Lord and Savior, who we have done our dead level best to help people to find that truth out, to live in that truth, not in how strong they can be, but how strong he is and live and bask in that strength. Stand tall and have, have a, 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 a confidence and a faith about you that what you see don't, don't make you stagger. I want to encourage you to listen to these podcasts. Go through these podcasts and, and know what God has done. Believe what he's done. Know without a shadow of a doubt that he's done it for everyone on this planet. He's done it for me, and he'll do it for you. Believe what God's Word says. It'll change your life. Now listen, I've, I always do this. I always do this. I want you to understand this. Are you born again? Have you made Jesus Christ Lord of your life? I know people believe in God. I know that. I, I know there's people out here that believe Jesus done exactly what he said he done. But I'm asking you... Have you made him Lord? Have you made him Savior of your life? Have you invited him in to do for you what he done when he died on the cross for the world? And that is to save us. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, Confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. Won't you be born again? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and save you? He wants to today. Make him Lord today. Invite him in. Let him show you who you are in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Now listen, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do helping us give this word away all over this planet free of charge. God's word. Not my stammering ways, but God's word. Thank you, partners. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. If you're not a partner, Pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. Get one of these cards. Download this phone app so that you can find out what God is saying to you, for you, and about you in his word.